Will the Bucks, the Tampa Bay Bucks, not the Milwaukee Bucks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers injuries be their downfall, gentlemen? Uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, Chris Godwin is out for the season now with a torn ACL, which is really tough, especially because it's happening late in the season, which means this rehab is going to go into next season too. So I got to ask you guys, you know, is this going to – are these? And this is not the only injury that they're dealing with either. So do you think that the injuries to Tampa Bay are going to hold them back uh, and be their downfall going for a repeat uh, Super Bowl championship? Paul, what do you say? There's no doubt about it. And also, personally, obviously, for Godwin, he was on the franchise tag, so I feel for the man. Um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully he still gets his bag because he's a talented dude, but signed the franchise tag to help Tampa Bay, who's trying to retain everybody. So uh, obviously our, our love is sent out to him, so uh, for Godwin in particular. But overall, to answer the question, there's no doubt about it. You think uh, Mike Evans, hamstring week to week, Fournette's going to be out maybe a game or two. And uh, we saw Brady. It's funny. I don't agree with this comment, but I saw it on social media. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, someone tweeted out under, aha, finally. Andy Dalton souped up as Tom Brady without all the weapons. I thought that was a hilarious comment. So I can't wow. Um, wow. I thought that was funny. He said, forget wow. the seven Super Bowls. That's what it's about. So I respect the take. I respect the take. Uh, the injuries are going to take him down, man. I thought they were on a crash course prior to this New Orleans, you know, shutout. First time in 15 years. Uh, that I thought they were heading back to the Super Bowl. But you just saw almost a level of ordinary for a 45-year-old who didn't have all the weapons. He just didn't look right. Part of that's the Saints. Uh, but overall, yeah, man, it's going to be their downfall. There's no question about it. They are not going to make a deep run with Godwin out, Evans, who knows, week to week. That doesn't sound great. And then Fournette's injury. Th there's just not enough there, although Antonio Brown coming back is going to be huge for him. Yeah. Uh, what do you say, uh, Ryan? I'm going to give a little bit of a hot take. Um, I don't think it's as bad as what people are saying. Um, look. I get it. Chris Godwin is Brady's favorite target, um, but it's likely that Evans is going to come back. Um, they're going to get Antonio Brown back. Leonard Fournette doesn't really sound like it's you know season altering. Um, so you still have Tom Brady. You still have that offensive line. So I, I I think the offense as a whole without Godwin they can still make ends meet. Um, because I look at the NFC, there really isn't like a big time defense that you're sitting there saying, "Oh my god, like we got we have to figure this out." Like the Packers, I think, are middling their. I think 17th in DVOA, DVOA on defense. But I'm going to say, like, the corners. The corners are still, like, a concern. Um, Carlton Davis has been out, so I guess that is alluding to the injuries being a concern. Um, but I, I still have a bad feeling when it comes to the uh, Buccaneers in terms of coaching. I know Bruce Arians is a Super Bowl winning coach, but I, I checked it out. You know, I, I think uh, Computer Cowboy put this out. I think that uh, of the worst five fourth down decisions of the week so far uh, for week uh, 15, Bruce Arians was four of them. Uh, they made terrible decisions against the Saints, Bruce Arians, Byron Leftwich. So you can you can p place the blame on that. I know they had uh, injuries to Godwin, et cetera. But man, if you're not if you're not going to risk it to get the biscuit, you're not going to win the Super Bowl. And Bruce Arians, that was like his mantra in 2020 to, you know, go for it. And he wasn't going for it at all. And that, that was pretty much a conservative uh, decision-making performance by Bruce Arians. So I think I think not enough people are talking about that because I think they should have gotten some points. Um, talk about zero. I mean, get some points. And if you, I think they could have gotten some points or maybe even a touchdown if Bruce Arians tried to be a little bit more aggressive and he just didn't do it. Yeah, I, I think that's a very interesting take. Uh, I think some of that is a bit of... Um, and it's nature. It's a, it's, it's just the, the, the nature of things. Uh, we look for things to to blame when things go wrong, uh, when teams underperform, which obviously Tampa Bay being shut out, not only losing, but being shut out is going to generate that sort of a concept. Lorenzo, I would love to hear what you have to say about this. Are the injuries going to be the downfall of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I'm going to piggyback off of Paul. I definitely believe it. And here's the reason why. During that Super Bowl run that Tampa Bay was on, they didn't have a myriad of injuries like they did at this point in the year. I mean, Godwin was healthy. Gronk was healthy. 
you know, they had help at, at full strength at the on defense, especially in the secondary. Ryan, you mentioned Carlton Davis. He's arguably their best shutdown corner. What are the chances you face Aaron Rodgers or Matthew Stafford or Dak Prescott or even a guy we're going to get into later on the show, Kyler Murray, and you don't have your best shutdown corner out there? I mean, the advantage goes to the opposition right there. And then with uh, Godwin had 15 catches, he was one of the lone bright spots. And now you're dealing with Mike Evans being injured. I don't know what's happened with Scotty Miller. I mean, he was a major contributor last year. So we've seen this movie before when it comes to championship teams and why they don't make it back to the Super Bowl. Sometimes it's the injury bug, and it's happening with the Buccaneers right now. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's very difficult for, you know, to to overlook or to to not call into question, um, you know, what they're going to do uh, based off of, you know, based off in, in, the, in the light of all these injuries. But, Lorenzo, you say you're going to piggyback off of Paul. I'm going to piggyback a little bit off of Ryan, but I'm going to mention two words that nobody mentioned. Uh, in regards to what's happening. And this does not affect the defense. This is an offensive situation. Uh, the two words are Tyler Johnson. Now, a lot of people may not be familiar with Tyler Johnson. He <laughs> hasn't gotten a ton of time to play. But when he has played, he's been a very strong contributor. And now I, I follow Tyler Johnson have, and have followed his career since he was a high school quarterback back in uh, the state of Minnesota, and he was all world there. He was on uh, with the with the, the Bucks last season. He had uh, – last year he played in 14 games, had three starts. He had 12 receptions for 169 yards, two touchdowns. This year he's had – played in 14 games with three starts, but he already has 27 receptions, 288 yards, hasn't gotten the end zone yet. But one thing about Tyler Johnson, Tom Brady – loves him he has spoken out about how much he trusts him how much he like loves to try to get him the ball anytime he gets an opportunity to 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 throw to him when he's in the game the thing of it is he has been buried behind chris godwin mike evans antonio brown much bigger names much more established guys but tyler johnson i'm telling you guys is the truth he is a legitimate NFL receiver, like I said, former quarterback. He went also went to University of Minnesota. He's a solid performer, and I am I am a, a strong believer that he will step up. And from an offensive standpoint, the Bucks will not miss Chris Godwin nearly as much as people think they will. And the reason they won't is because of Tyler Johnson. The other reason that they won't is because, thankfully, to Tom Brady, it, 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 which is a good thing for Tom Brady is that the offensive line is still intact. That is the one area of their team that is not just completely wrecked with injuries. Tristan Wirfs is still there. Jensen's still there. Ali Marpet. All of these guys are still there in place. So that works. You can still establish a solid running game that keeps defenses honest because you have the the, the O-line in place. And I, like, like Ryan, believe that Mike Evans will ultimately be back. You still have Gronk. You still have Cameron Bray. You still have some options and some things that they can do offensively. I would be more concerned about their secondary with so many injuries there, Carlton Davis, Richard Sherman, those guys out. But they did hold the Saints, albeit with Taysom Hill, lead quarterback, to only nine points themselves. In most games, if you hold a team to nine, you're more than likely going to win. <laughs> so I don't think that that's going to be as big of a deal as people think. They come back, they bounce back next week with a stronger offensive performance. Tyler Johnson, I'm calling it right now. I'm calling it right now. Tyler Johnson gets at least five receptions for at least 70 yards next game, Ooh. and he probably finds the end zone. Ooh. So you mark it down. If you're looking for somebody to pick up on fantasy, Tyler Johnson is a guy you definitely need to be looking at. I think he <laughs> you, you got you got Paul on it right now. A little game drop right there. I think he has a strong performance.